Just wanted to let you know that, yeah, I am the, the original founder. Uh, I am a former librarian from Utrecht University Library. Um, so you can imagine the scare that we had when I was over here and I heard all the news about the attack uh, just, just now. Um, um, what Lean Library does is uh, we build a browser extension that puts a lot of library services, uh, not just authentication services, but other services uh, into the user's workflow. And for starters, I'm just going to quickly show you what it does. Uh, one of the features that I'm going to show you is um, how we can automatically authenticate people through Open Athens. We've got more features than those, but I'll just show you this uh, real quick. What you see here is I'm opening a uh, random article on Science Direct, uh, opens up, and I'm automatically taken to an uh, authentication page for Leo Pharma. It's a customer that we're working with. Choosing my password using LastPass, and I get authenticated through Open Athens on Science Direct. And um, the thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, there was no cognitive load for me. I didn't have to think about what system should I use, uh, do I need to use a proxy server, do I need to use Open Athens. Uh, I'll just present it with a random or, or with a very similar uh, familiar login screen. I'll just enter my credentials and here I go. Um, and also it was very clear to me that the access is provided by my library, which is all uh, can, be, can be quite an issue of course. Um, and Lean Library actually started out with the notion that for a lot of patrons, it started out at an academic institution and an academic library of course, it started out with the notion that the library for many patrons is not the starting point anymore. Uh, many libraries of course have a really nice page with a lot of uh, resource domains that can be opened through the proxy, a lot of information on which resources they've got access to. But if you're a patron and you don't start at the library, either physically or online, you might not know whether your library has a license for Science Direct, or you might not know whether you can actually authenticate on Taylor and Francis. You, there's, there's a lot of things you might not know. You might not know whether you actually need to be on campus to access specific resources. Um, and this is not a de deliberate choice from end users. It's not the, that they that they chosen to not start at the library anymore. This is just how they work. They'll just dive into a database and expect things to work, and quite often they don't. Um, and I wanted to take you through a few of those, those issues. For instance, again, Science Direct. Um, does my library have a license? How do I know? What, how do I figure that out if I don't go through the library's website? And what method for authentication, authentication should I use? Or maybe I'm going to use Open Athens. Sounds nice. Sounds open. Uh, or Shibboleth. Got no clue what that is. Maybe a proxy server. Don't understand how that works and it's not on here somewhere. Or maybe I'll just have to use the VPN, which is cumbersome as well, of course, sometimes. Same thing here, Taylor and Francis. Um, so a patent that actually has chosen to try to get access, how do you figure out which method to use? Uh, and after authenticating, is it, going to be, is it going to be helpful to me? Am I really going to have access to the stuff that I want to have access to? Uh, is this just leading me on to a dead end? Um, or maybe this. So you end up on this article, looks really interesting, and then the publisher says, uh, $74, just $74. Uh, maybe, maybe this article is already licensed by your library, but how are you supposed to figure that out? And we know for a fact that a lot of researchers, especially those who are in a hurry and need to do a presentation, will simply just use their budgets and pay because they don't know how otherwise to get access. And also the fact that one article might be available on different locations and it might be licensed on location A, platform A, and might not be licensed on platform B. I mean, that's just really cumbersome, really, really complicated. And, and this one, of course. Uh, so you go to Google Scholar. Uh, how do I get to see those full text links? What do you need to do to actually have them appear? Um, yeah, can also be, be quite cumbersome. And a lot of these issues, of course, would have been solved uh, if patrons simply were starting at the library website. Uh, but they just, they just don't. And there are more of these issues, of course. Um, and Lean Library, again, it got started at uh, Utrecht University Library when I was working there as a program manager. I worked at the innovations uh, uh, department. And we tasked ourselves with, with trying to figure out how to, how to respond, being an academic library, how to respond to this change in user behavior that we, uh, that we saw. Uh, what, what, what should we do? And I'm not a librarian by education, so um, what I think I brought in was uh, a bit of, an, of a new, new insight. It was all completely new to me. Um, 
And what I also did is uh, uh, have a lot of cups of coffee with end users, like Fee was doing as well, uh, just go into the coffee shop and have conversations with end users about how the library works and what's working for them, what's, what, what's not working for them. Um, and at a certain point in time, I had, I had a brainwave. Can't we simply put a lot of those services into the user's browser so that the user doesn't have to go, go to the library, but the library will just be there with the end user? Um, and um, could, we, could we solve a lot of that, of that patent confusion by, by uh, having, having all these services in, in the user's uh, workflow? Um, and there were quite a few considerations, of course, because, again, uh, um, browser extension is a really powerful technology. You can do a lot of things. You can also see a lot of things. So, yeah, can we, can we actually build this? Uh, that was one of the questions. But also privacy uh, with a browser extension you're in the user's browser. So, uh, by definition, you can see everything they're doing in their browser. And that is really a privileged position to be in. So will people actually trust us being in their browser? Uh, mean, that means that we need to uh, focus greatly on uh, user privacy and usefulness. Will people actually install it? Um, are they going to use it? Uh, it was just a wild idea. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. We'll simply test it out, and that's what we did. Um, so we built a prototype at the time, um, and again went back to the coffee shop, uh, back to those early, uh, early adopters of that, of that tech, and got a lot of feedback, um, just asking them what they liked about it and what they didn't like about it. And... At a certain point in time, we uh, ended up with a browser extension that did this. Go into JSTOR, and it will, it takes a while, automatically redirect through the proxy of my library. And you can see here on top, I'm quite sure you can't read it, but it says access provided by Koninklijke Bibliotheek, the Dutch <coughs> National Library. And a small notification informing me as a patron what just happened, why I was just redirected, and, and just informing me that my library actually is helping me with getting access to these resources. Uh, and the nice thing is, uh, through a few iterations and getting a lot of feedback, uh, we ended up with more or less this, and quotes like these. Uh, it improves my search for articles a thousand times, a lot. Uh, you have taken away a most hated hurdle in my life. And uh, nice as it is, this quote, of course, the, the, the really nice thing about, I like about this one is that it's not cherry-picked. We got a lot of quotes like these. People really appreciated the library being in their browser, helping them with just tiny things like getting access through a proxy server automatically, not having to do a lot. And um, that's when it hit me. Um, and I had that many quotes and spoken with that many, many patents that I thought this needs to be out there, it shouldn't be limited to just Utrecht University library users. Um, and that's when Lean Library got founded. So I uh, went through uh, the in, uh, uh, incubator program at Utrecht University and we started the company, Lean Library, hooked up with a professional development agency and right now we've built, uh, we've, we've added a lot of other features and we built a professional version of that initial idea. And over the last two years, uh, we've been working with uh, Open Athens as well on uh, supporting Open Athens uh, too. And I'd like to show you a few slides again, sh just really short video clips on, on what that looks like. And this is uh, the first one where, um, oh, this is actually the one that I've shown you just now, but I'll simply show it again because it's quite short. Just again, opening up that article on Science Direct. It loads, the browser extension takes me through my authentication screen. This looks all very familiar to me. I'm not thinking about just entering my credentials. And there's automated access through Open Athens. And you can see in the right, it says brought to you by Leo Pharma. And the second screenshot is now that I've authenticated, I think even more seamless. Let me see if this works. I'm trying to get this started. It worked before, of course. Ah, yeah. oh, can't make it to work anymore. Uh, what did? Here it is. Well, here's a third, actually, one. Um, opening JDD online, automatically being redirected through uh, Open Athens again. 
and I land on the homepage, but here's another thing that I need to do. I need to press continue, I don't press login. And here you can see uh, where we pop up another message informing the end user about what to do, about not to click login again. Uh, just a tiny bit of information, but quite useful because if you press login again, you'll just get into a loop that you don't wanna, wanna go into. Um, so right now, Lean Library is uh, a very mission-driven company. We are uh, driven by um, uh, just wanting to improve uh, patrons' lives, taking away the hurdles out of uh, library services, making it really easy to use authentication services like uh, proxy servers, like Open Athens. Also, point out if articles are available uh, elsewhere and just make life a little bit easier for those patrons. Again, that's how I started out with at Utrecht University Library. Um, dedicated to Patron privacy, we really try to keep the end user private. We don't know who those end users are. We'll have them authenticate through Open Athens and they're not authenticating with us. And it's a fully supported solution right now. Um, corporate and academic customers worldwide, uh, worldwide right now, Roche, Nova Nordisk, Harvard and Stanford, of course, really nice names. You might have known about them. Uh, and, and we just recently got acquired by, uh, by Sage uh, and just wanted to stress that we are still a very, uh, well, a completely vendor agnostic uh, solution. So we're not gonna prioritize any of, of, uh, of their content. Um, that's it for now. Questions or feedback? Question. Sure, there's a question over there. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Say what? Oh, yeah, that was magical. Um. <laughs> nice, thanks. Uh, so, you have a browser extension that initiated the sending the person back to Leo Pharma. Yes. That's awesome. Can it also send attributes like where someone is at, GPS kind of stuff? I know you don't want the privacy information, but does it have that capability to automatically put someone into a department or a location? I, I'm not sure if I quite... Quite because it's a browser question, extension, so can it pull up information that's available to the browser, like location? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm a smart yeah, guy. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so two yeah. answers to that, actually. I mean, we are, we are in the browser, so yeah, we can do a lot of things in the browser. But the other side, I think maybe even more important uh, part of that question is, uh, do we really want to do that? Fair enough, yeah. Uh, and is Technically, that not, though. Technically, Probably, yes. I Very looked nice. At it. It's an interesting idea, though. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Another question up here. Very quick and easy one. How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get to that if we can get in touch. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, um, one of the things, of course, about pricing. What I do want to mention is, is that we, we, we don't do anything with monetizing user data. So our business model is really simple. We just, wanna, we just need, need uh, a subscription fee to pay our developers. So that, that's about it. So really simple. Yeah. Would you consider doing something like a JISC deal? Yeah, absolutely. I think we are in touch with JISC right now. Yeah, over there. Thank you. Yeah, we've done other consortia deals as well. Hi, sorry, which browsers is the extension available for, please? It's available for most modern browsers uh, and, and a version for Internet Explorer, but I don't want to call that a modern browser. <laughs> it's just, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, we do have a version, but don't tell anybody else, please. <laughs> yeah. Johan, thanks very much. I think we Thank you. Wrap it up there.